District Attorney Alvin Bragg told the judge overseeing the criminal case against Donald Trump today that newly disclosed documents should not further delay the ex-president's trial. Bragg argued that the documents handed over to Trump's team from the federal investigation into Michael Cohen had little meaningful new information, writing, quote, the people now have good reason to believe that this production contains only limited materials relevant to the subject matter of this case. The ex-president's legal team asked the judge in the case to either completely dismiss the charges or push the trial into the summer, blaming Bragg's office for the belated disclosure of these records. But Bragg writes today that the current delay until April 15th, quote, is a more than reasonable amount of time for a defendant to review the information provided. He adds, quote, enough is enough. These tactics by defendant and defense counsel should be stopped. Harry, David, and Tim are all back with us. Harry, walk us through this filing today. Sure. So uh, there is a bunch of papers that were, in fact, turned over by the Southern District of New York, the federal office. There's some good reason that they, in fact, might have been doing it at the last minute, but it really doesn't matter. The legal question is, what amount of time does it take for Trump to process these and prepare his defense? So you have his hyperbolic claims. It's 31,000 pages or this or that. But Bragg's filing mainly says, look, when it comes to it, there's a little bit of stuff about Michael Cohen. Fine. Give him some time to incorporate that into his defense. 30 days will do it. And that really should be the focus of the claim and the ruling by Judge Mechan. On the other hand, he is, the judge, somewhat interested at just how this happened. And he's indicated in the hearing he wants to kind of get to the bottom of it. But I think at the end of the day, without pointing, being able to point the finger at Brag, and there's no reason to do that at all. The question really will resolve to how much time does Trump need? Unsurprisingly, he says either 90 days or dismiss the whole thing. But it's really a pretty modest uh, belated production, something that he can absorb in fairly quick order. And it shouldn't uh, take more than even a month is a lot, but they've already um, acquiesced to a month. So I think that's what Merchan is likely to hold. Tim, how worried do you think Trump is that this actually goes to trial? I think he's worried about any of these cases going mm. to trial. You know, his lawyers have tried to prevent witnesses from testifying. They, they've indicated they're going to make claims that he relied on outside advice when he, when he forked over the hush money payments. Um, I don't know that that will stand in court. But obviously, Bragg has a higher standard to prove here. It's a criminal case. He needs to show intent. There's a tape recording here. I might r remind you, like there is in Fonnie Willis's Georgia case, there's a recording that Michael Cohn made of Donald Trump telling him to go get Alan, Alan Weisselberg, the former CE, CFO, um, to get a payment in order. So there, there's evidence here, but it's still a very high bar. I've always thought this is one of the weaker cases that, that have come to Trump's doorstep. But having said that, I don't think Donald Trump wants to be on trial again anywhere. He, he tried to make the last two with E. Jean Carroll and, and, and the New York AG's case show trials. For, for him to court his base, and he got disastrous financial results. I don't know that he wants to go into another courtroom where he's going to be under oath. He's a horrible witness if he testifies. He, he, he can't, he lies, he exaggerates, he doesn't stay on script. He's a lawyer's worst nightmare on a, on a witness stand. So I don't think he wants to do this, but he may have no choice. It strikes me, Dave Jolly, I'm sure you've heard the, the former mm. president on, on the trail sort of referring to all of these cases, the Georgia case, the New York case, as, as local cases, as though they don't have national implications, when, of course, when anything tied to Trump has national implications. And as we've seen from Bragg, you know, we call this the hush money case so as to differentiate it from the other election interference cases. But at its core, Bragg is arguing that this is about election interference interference. It's not about some one-off thing that happened in New York State. Yeah, that's right, Alicia. And I guess I would remind the former president that when he says local cases, he actually means cases that are beyond his reach to pardon himself should he become hmm. president, because these are not federal jurisdictions. And so take your pick for the narrative on this one. We will hear Michael Cohen, David Pecker, and others retell the story about Stormy Daniels and the hush money to try to make it go away as a way to interfere with with the election to prevent voters from learning more information, derogatory information about Donald Trump. Or you can make it about the fact that he is a serial fraudster when it comes to business, because it's also the 30 plus uh, count indictment is about business fraud 
in the state of New York. So this kind of has it all wrapped into one. Is this the case? You know, the one thing in the voters' minds that we have not yet seen react to is a criminal conviction. We now have some civil judgments to look at. We have not seen a criminal conviction. It does that kind of shore up those persuadable voters who don't just want more of Donald Trump, or do we see a reflexive, you know, this is the deep state out to get Donald Trump, and we see the intensity ramp up? We don't know yet, but this case might be the only one that we get to test that with. I just got to ask you, Harry, Judge Mershon issued a ruling allowing a number of witnesses to testify in this case. That includes Michael Cohen, David Packer, Karen McDougal. How do you think those people, Harry, impact this case? A lot. And they go to exactly what David's saying and, and what you're saying, Alicia. In other words, they're going to permit the DA to present this election interference theme, even though we have trouble coming up with the shorthand note of it. But the, the story that they are going to be permitted to tell the DA is after Access Hollywood, which is coming in itself, the, the fact of the tape, he is reeling, and the, and another revelation involving sexual misconduct could have really been fatal at, from the point of view and, and the time of the uh, right before the election when already his prospects were rough. Murchon, by the way, issued a flurry of rulings, a few dozen, great contrast with, say, Judge Cannon, uh, who's methodical in the extreme down in Mar-a-Lago, and all of them tend to favor the DA. So not only will he be telling this larger story of election interference, Trump will be prohibited from trying to argue selective prosecution, advice of counsel, and by setting these ground rules in advance, Merchan will be in a position to control his courtroom and really try to nip things in the bud when Trump tries, as I'm certain he will, to get away with it.